Hey scrappers, if you're looking to figure out what materials you should sell this week or hold this week, now is the time to do it. Our weekly report is gonna give you that information, up-to-date market news, pricing. Let's get right into it. We'll talk about it inside. Hey Scrappers, Tom here and today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, a couple days behind April Fool's so I don't have any jokes for you but I do have some good news and it's definitely not a joke and it talks about copper prices having a massive increase in the last week which was so surprising to me and we'll go into that in a couple of seconds um, but just a couple of things I want to touch on we read so many of your comments online whether you're watching our YouTube videos with our weekly report our scrapper tips our scrapper section that has you know stuff with the auto wrapping or anything like that so any ideas videos that you want us to make to help you better understand how to make more money with your scrap, please let us know because that's kind of what we do. We're here to be able to share knowledge, learn things. Um, in fact, we posted a video last week about sealed units and some people asked about draining the oil, asking about the wait time um, after the oil is removed. So I'll just talk about some of, some of those things real quick. When you have sealed units and you do want to be able to strip those down, you know, it's not something that I recommend doing um, at my scrapyard. We don't do it, but we do buy the units when they're drained. And when you do come up with sealed units that have oil in them, first and foremost, drain them, right? One of the things that we found is that drilling a hole on the bottom of the sealed unit will get most of the oil out. But you want to make sure that you put two or three holes in there because sometimes it creates a little bit of a vacuum. The oil drains out faster and it just goes a little quicker. Here you can see me talking about some of the, the things to look for in these different sealed units. Um, you can check this video out right on YouTube. But I would not suggest doing this unless you really love working and love tools and stuff like that. It's, it's very labor intensive. And unless you have 50 or 60 units that you're going to do at a time, it might not be worth the squeeze. But one thing you want to do first and foremost is drain it out. Scrap yards know that there's residual oil on these things. That's why Speedy Dry exists. So you don't have to have them perfect, but have them as dry as possible because the last thing the scrap yard wants to do is pick it up and have oil just pouring out of one of the sides. Then we know that it is filled with oil and it causes us problems and you problems. And let's be honest, who really wants to do work twice? So so let's go right into the markets. And I, and I mentioned copper prices, and I've now seen copper prices jump over 4% in the last week. Um, I, I got to tell you, you know, when the markets kind of bottomed out a little while ago around trading level around 370, I did not expect this to happen. If I did, I would have saved everything for the last month and then sold it for a nice profit. But that's not what happened. We've seen copper prices jump just today, Wednesday the 3rd. 13 cents per pound. Now, of course, the question is, how is that going to translate into pricing at my scrapyard? Uh, me at my scrapyard, when I see prices like this jumping, I don't change prices the same day. And I normally don't even change them the next day. When I go to sell material, I actually went to sell a load at the higher prices before. And the trader said to me, I'm not going to lock in orders until tomorrow when I see prices steady two days in a row, just because of the material that we were dealing with. So we are starting to see those copper prices upticking because two weeks ago we saw that nice increase in the market. And we have now seen Bear Bright, for instance, has a 2% increase over the last 30 days, as you can see in this, this slide here. But we are going to see those prices going up even more in the coming days. We're going to see these prices starting to really increase. And, and it might be you know the second week of April that we start to see these things kick in. But I don't know where the markets are going to go. But I, I, I'm enjoying the ride, and I think you should too. If you're continuing to hold on to copper, it's something that I wouldn't recommend. It's one of my very strong sell items this week. When I look at what we need to get rid of and what we want to get out, I wouldn't hold the stuff. For those of you that are waiting for copper to trade at five dollars again, you know we're in a, a funny year, an election year, oil cycles, rate cuts, you know manufacturing up down. We're not sure where things are going, but I certainly from a scrap side of things wouldn't be holding on to much uh, at all at this point. The only recommendation I had this week was to hold on to nickel uh, based products, which would be your stainless steels. Um, 
you know, but even then we have seen a slight increase in nickel prices recently. So who knows, you know, markets are what they are. Now, here we are, we have some different wire prices. And if you can look, you see a lot of green, which is just showing either a stable or an upticking market when it comes to copper wire prices right now. And, and posting your prices online is about as easy as it could be. When you click on something like this and you click the submit price, but, and you just put the price that you got at Rockway Recycling, we're paying $1.15 for regular insulated wire right now. So just posting those prices on there, it helps not only you, but other scrappers know where the national averages are. And, you know, it, it, you know it's not like it helped my scrapyard out. So it's helping you and other scrapyards out to learn what's going on with these markets and what type of a change there is. So, you know, check these things out, whether you're on your iPhone, your Droid, the mobile website, you know, I scrapapp.com on a desktop or an iPad, um, you know, these prices are strong and I think that they, they, they warrant a sell right now. That's why I'm moving material out as quickly as it hits my door. Um, other things we, 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 you know, listen, that, that bridge collapse last week, sucks, right? I feel so bad for those families that passed away. I'm not going to dwell on that, even though it, it deserves our respect and our, our, our condolences. condolences. Thank you. Um, but, but how is the bridge collapse going to affect the scrap market? So here we are, we're, we're seeing Baltimore as the seventh largest port for exports. I read a number yesterday from uh, ISRI, which is the Institute of Scrap and Recycling Industries, talking about uh, 1.8 million pounds, excuse me, 1.8 million dollars worth of scrap metal is shipped daily out of the port of Baltimore. So it is going to have a bit of an impact for that area. One of the problems that you're going to see on the East Coast, and, and it's going to be a funny problem because it's really going to be in that area. It's going to be condensed there because think about it. The scrapyards that own slips on the water, they can't ship anything out right now. So what their choice is going to be is to load trucks and send them somewhere north or south. Or if they have railroad access, they'll be doing that, but they're not going to be able to have a quick turnaround. So what you're going to see happening with the bridge collapse is a very quick decrease of prices, but only in a region because Baltimore itself you know, there's other places to ship a little north and a little south from there. It's going to be just that port that's affected, which, of course, as a seventh largest port in the U.S., that will have an effect, but it's not going to have as big of an effect on the scrap prices as you would think. If anything, I know this is bad to say, but it would have an uptick in the scrap prices because now you have, you know, a port that can't ship things out and you're going to have an oversupply in those docks. So when the oversupply happens, you know, prices go down in the area, that's what's going to happen. But you might see a bit of an uptick from the New York, New Jersey area or a little below from the Carolinas. You might see prices going up there, but it is an isolated area. And there's a lot of other places that scrap ships out of. If this was something in New Jersey, New York, one of the largest export markets in the country, then we would really see a, a big price decrease. Um, in the New Jersey, New York area, and that might domino effect into other areas. But these are some of the things that you were talking about online. Uh, it's not going to really affect national or international prices, but it is going to cause a hiccup for the foreseeable future. Um, other markets, catalytic converters, you know, we'll pull up rrcats.com right now. One of the easiest ways for you to sell your catalytic converters is through rrcats.com with thousands of reviews. Please check the team out with free shipping on um, OEM catalytic converters and, and 10 days to hold your prices. It's a really great deal. Uh, national averages have been ticking up and we're seeing some of the, the larger OEMs coming off of these vehicles upticking as well. If we can scroll down a little bit. We'll see some of the prices, exotic cats ranging from 200 to $570. Uh, in fact, earlier today, we purchased a cat for just over $500. One of the first times that we've done that in a couple of months, just with the prices being where they are. So that was nice to see. Certain sor torpedo cats are ranging in the 100 to $1,200 range, but again, specialty cats. And with different laws going into effect here in New Jersey and in other states across the U.S. after the huge string of 
cat thefts that happened in 2021, you know, we're going to start to see a little bit of a slowdown because people aren't selling their cars like they are. The prices are not what they were. And many people are expecting, you know, a huge double or tripling of the market. But when I look at these prices that you see in front of you, whether they're Chrysler cats between 90 and $275 or Red loaves ranging from 40 to 504, you know, high grade domestics, 40 to 608. When I see these prices, I try to look at other factors like industry demand, consumer demand. So one thing that I did see was car manufacturers and car dealers have a lot of inventory on their lot. I was driving with my kids on uh, Monday and we were actually coming to work here and we were driving by a car lot and my daughter said, wow, look at all those cars. And I looked over at the Ford dealer and boy, they had F-150s galore. They had F-150 electric trucks galore. I heard that there's over 150 days, uh, 150 days supply of F-150 electrics right now, not to mention a 30 to 40 day supply of regular F-150s. And that's not good for the overall industry because you want to see car lots moving their product by moving their cars out Putting a new car out into the, the market, an old car is coming off, either going into the used car industry or, you know, kind of sales funnel or into the scrap industry. And when we don't see a lot of new cars moving, that means that demand for catalytic converter material is going to be down. The steel demand is going to be down. The aluminum demand is going to be down. The lead demand is going to be down for those gas combustible engines that still need, you know, their lead acid batteries to kickstart them. Um, um, so, you know, seeing, and then, and not to mention interest rates, higher interest rates is leading to people's borrowing costs going up. So your monthly payment in the last four years has gone up not only because of inflation, but also because of interest rates. So these are all negative factors that affect the scrap metal industry and the markets. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, people total cars and obviously they need to get new ones or their old car completely dies and has to get scrapped. That continues to happen every day. But we try to look at things not from a, a, a minor perspective, but from a big macro perspective. And we're not seeing the cars going off the lots nearly at the pace that we saw the last couple of years. That is causing big car dealers. Tesla, for instance, yesterday announced their uh, their last quarter sales and their estimate uh, was 70,000 more than their actual sales. That means that they sold 70,000 less cars than they were estimated to sell, estimated to sell. And that's going to hurt the markets. I know that they're electric, but they still need aluminum and they still need steel and they still need copper for the different electric motors that are running the vehicle. These are things to keep in mind when it comes to the overall markets. We just don't see huge demands right now. And, and with these copper prices having what I would like to consider an artificial increase, I really think that we should look at these markets a little more closely and try to figure out where they're going to go. And that's what I do week in and week out. But any of your questions that can lead me to better answers, of course, I'm always open for. Ask questions, we'll give answers, and we'll write blogs, we'll make videos, and we'll kind of talk about all those different things. So uh, scrappers, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen over the next next week or next month. Generally, the second quarter is a little bit of a lag. You know, here we are, April, May, June, quarter number two. I am expecting the markets to have an inconsistent path, not an upswing like we saw in quarter one. It's going to be interesting to see how some of these corporations who have been making large amounts of money are going to weather some of these storms. We're seeing a lot of people going to work, but we're not seeing a lot of people spending on consumer products opposed to spending on on, you know, entertainment or vacations, that type of thing. So when we look at these, we just don't know what's going to go on. But next week, we will have a quarter one review. We'll talk about what happened, you know, January, February, and March, and we'll see where kind of a, a Q2 preview is. So stay tuned for that. Uh, check out our other videos. Let us know. Comment below anything that you want me to go deeper in depth on next week. You know, by all means, I'm ready to, to talk about it. Until next week, Scrappers, this is Tom, and I'll scrap you later.
Thanks for watching our video. For $2.99 a month, by becoming a member, you can get access to early videos, member-only videos, merchandise discounts from our store, and priority comments that we answer before answering any other scrappers. Click the link below to learn more. Until next time, scrap you later.